Prohibition uh, is part of what we call the Progressive Era. It was basically a time uh, when the government tried to actually pass a lot of laws to make people better people. They, they enacted laws that gave them more rights, uh, made it a little better for them in the workplace, and just made their lives a little bit better, but it went a little too far. Instead of just giving them better opportunities, they actually tried to make them better. And one of the ways it was was by uh, making alcohol unconstitutional. You know, the Mafia comes to the United States with the Sicilian immigrants who have come over around the turn of the century. They just borrowed and brought with them the methods, the tactics, the structure, the idea. Um, most of the kingpins of the Mafia in the United States through Prohibition come over as immigrants or their parents came as immigrants turn of the century. Uh, a very good question is whether the Mafia would have become what it is now, reached its current stage, uh, without the likes of Al Capone, Carlos Gambino, and Lucky Luciano. The Castella Maurice War refers to a time when uh, Maranzano, Giuseppe Maranzano in Sicily, decided he wanted to make a play and try to take over the Mafia in New York. So Maranzano's work, although it worked for a short period of time to put himself in control, uh, eventually, again, was short-lived, and it just paved the way for Lucky Luciano to take control of the U.S. Uh, Mafia. The social uh, hierarchy of the Mafia uh, is, is a pyramid, like many organizations. It's not very different at all uh, from a corporation or other, any other entity. Uh, you had people on the street were called the soldiers, uh, people at the top were called the heads of the family, uh, and the heads of the family got together and had a commission, which was a group of just the heads of the families. Uh, Lucky Luciano uh, is considered probably the, the father of the modern day Mafia. And the reason is, it was actually Lucky Luciano who was born in Italy, came to the United States and worked his way up with Meyer Lansky uh, to the head of, of a mafia group. He basically was the one who envisioned and came up with the five families uh, in the commission, which was basically the leaders of the five families who worked together, much like a, a, a civic business group would get together and, and set up rules and ethics and so forth for conducting business in a particular industry or trade, they did that for organized crime. And that led to organized crime working together, even though they were competitors, uh, they did have their skirmishes and fights between them, but they had a lot more cooperation, and therefore they became efficient, and they became really good at organized crime. They had less fights between themselves, uh, they became highly profitable with less competition among themselves, so he took organized crime and his model and his system, which still exists to some degree today, made it incredibly efficient. One of the men on Lucky's commission was Al Capone. Okay, but Al Capone compared to other gangsters, racketeers of the Prohibition era, I would say I think the guy's a genius. Uh, when we talk about Al Capone, what makes Al Capone or what made him such a successful gangster or mafia leader uh, was basically two things. Like most leaders, he was ruthless. Uh, he intimidated, he killed his opponents, he did what he had to do in a ruthless world to succeed. And there's no real secrets about that. It takes an ability of some people to kill and to not worry about the consequences and to not have a conscience that many of us have. The second thing that Al Capone did very well was he straddled the world between the Mafia and the legitimate world, meaning he was in the Mafia uh, but he portrayed and he got along with people in the regular world and he would laugh and be a character and kind of someone that everybody knew and um, was his figure and because of that he actually was able to go on for year after year after year after year people either A, not really sure if he was as bad as they said he was uh, and he became kind of a household name. After Lucky had stepped down from the head of the commission Carlo Gambino eventually rose to power. Carlo Gambino's uh, primary role of fame is there was a, a meeting called Appalachia, which the, the members of the, of the the heads of the families met when a police officer actually saw some cars, thought it was suspicious, and called all some other troopers in, and they went in and they they flushed out the house where these people were meeting. After that happened, many of them got caught, uh, and there was a bit of uh, turmoil and, and chaos in the Mafia world because all the leaders, you know, each group now was leaderless to some degree. And from that, Carlo Gambino took the reins and took control and became head of the commission as it reconstituted itself. And he did so, he was not known to be very violent, he was known to be very mellow, 
never spent a day in jail. Uh, and so his strength was seizing the opportunity of this chaos and emerging, grabbing the reins, and holding on to them in a very non-emotional and a very uh, strong, quiet, understated way to the point where he actually could have been considered one of the most successful gangsters because he lived his entire life, no jail, at the top of the mafia scheme. The real success, power, and influence derived from the Mafia came from these three figures. So, are Capone, Gambino, and Luciano heroes or villains?